All right, good. So yeah, thank you. I know you bring you bring one animal in this briefing room. Everything goes to everything goes to pot. Yeah, exactly. So to speak. Yeah, I'll be here all week. No, what? Goes good move. Yeah. Sherwin's the only one not amused by any of this humor. <laughs> all right, good afternoon. Um, not that you need reminding, and this is why you're all here, uh, but in a short while, uh, we will have the permanent representative of Switzerland uh, brief you as uh, Switzerland is taking over the presidency of the Security Council for the month of May for its first ever presidency. Um, the Secretary General arrived in Doha in Qatar today. Uh, this moment, he just started the first session, a working dinner of the meeting he's hosting with special envoys on Afghanistan to reach points of commonality on key issues, such as human rights, especially for women and girls, inclusive governance, countering terrorism and drug trafficking. The meeting, which uh, will end tomorrow, is intending to achieve a common understanding with the international community on how to engage with the Taliban on these issues. Uh, as you've been uh, asking me for a list of countries that have sent envoys to this meeting, uh, I can tell you that the countries are China, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Iran, Japan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Norway, Pakistan, Qatar, the Russian Federation, Saudi Arabia, Tajikistan, Turkey, Turkmenistan, the United Arab Emirates, the United Kingdom, the United States, Uzbekistan, the European Union, and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Uh, and we are, as we speak, sending you a note to correspondence with that list so for those of you who were not able to type fast enough. <laughs> Uh, and we'll have updates uh, from the meeting as it goes. And uh, the Secretary General is scheduled to speak to the press in uh, Doha tomorrow uh, before he goes on for onward travel, which I'm about to announce now. He is uh, scheduled to arrive in Nairobi in Kenya on uh, tomorrow, May 2nd. Um, on the 4th and 5th uh, of May, he will chair this year's first session of the UN System's Chief Executive Boards for Coordination. Uh, the board meets twice a year and brings together the leaders of UN agencies, funds, and programs, and it's the highest level of coordination for, it's the highest level coordination forum for the UN system. Um, prior to the meetings of the CEB, the Secretary General will on Wednesday uh, is scheduled to attend a state dinner hosted by President of Kenya, William Ruto. Earlier in the day, he will meet with UN staff at the UN office in Nairobi. He's also scheduled to meet, um, to hold a press conference at the UN office in Nairobi. On May 5th, on Friday, the Secretary General will travel to Bujumbura in Burundi to take part in the 11th high-level meeting of the Regional Oversight Mechanism of the Peace, Security, and Cooperation Framework for the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the region. At the meeting, which will take place on the 6th of May, leaders from the Great Lakes region will take stock of progress and challenges in the implementation of the agreement that was signed in Addis Ababa 11, 10 years ago. Excuse me. They will discuss the implementation also of the Luanda and Nairobi agreements, which are more recent. While in Bunjabur, the Sec Secretary General is scheduled to meet um, with the President of Burundi, as well as leaders from the region who are attending uh, the meeting. Our Deputy Secretary General, uh, over the past few days, um, has been traveling. She arrived last night in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia to engage in a high-level strategic dialogue with officials from the African Union and the UN country team. Earlier today, she met with the Deputy Chairperson of the African Union, um, and later with, she, will, she also met with the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Abiy Ahmed. In the past few days, while in Nairobi, she participated in the uh, Mo Ibrahim Governance Weekend, which are joining leading voices from across Africa. Uh, on Sudan, you will have seen that yesterday the Secretary General dispatched Martin Griffiths, the Emergency Relief Coordinator, uh, to uh, the region uh, to explore how we can bring immediate relief to millions of people whose lives have been turned upside down by the ongoing fighting in um, Sudan. Uh, the, Mr. Griffiths arrived in uh, Nairobi 
uh, where he met President Ruto, also the Canadian Foreign Minister, Melanie Jolie, who uh, was there, and others to discuss what he called the catastrophic situation in uh, Sudan. Um, the UN and our, and our partners are doing our best to reboot the humanitarian response in the country, Mr. Griffith said. And as you'll recall, massive looting have displaced most of our supplies. We're urgently exploring ways to bring in, in and distribute additional supplies. Uh, just a bit more information on what's going on on the ground. The World Food Program is immediately lifting the temporary suspension of operations. Distribution of food is expected to commence in the states of Gedarif, Gezira, Kasala, and White Nile in the coming days uh, to provide the life-saving assistance that many so desperately need right now. As you know, the suspension of operations was put in place after the tragic deaths of three WFP team members on April 15th. Um, the, the if, where the security situation allows it, including in eastern Sudan, our partners are continuing their operations, mainly in health and nutrition services. WHO has distributed fuel, fuel to some hospitals in Sudan and is also working to offload six containers of medical supplies that arrive by ship in Port Sudan on the Red Sea. This includes supplies for treating traumatic injuries and severe acute malnutrition. Meanwhile, the UN Population Fund is supporting partners on the ground with life-saving health care and supply, uh, supplies for safe births. The UN Refugee Agency, in consultation with the governments and partners, are planning for up to 800,000 people who may flee fighting in Sudan um, to the seven neighboring countries. With our quick resolution to the crisis, we will continue to see more people forced to flee in search of safety and humanitarian assistance. The latest figures from our teams on the ground confirm that 73,000 people have arrived in neighboring countries, including Sudanese refugees and also returning refugees, notably from South Sudan, South Sudanese refugees who had taken um, refuge in, uh, in South Sudan. Um, senior personnel appointment to share with you today. Secretary General is appointing Clementine Inqueta Salami of Cameroon as his Deputy Special Representative for the UN uh, mission in Sudan, UNITAMS. She will also serve as the uh, UN resident coordinator and humanitarian coordinator in the country. Uh, she succeeds uh, uh, Cardiata Loindai of Senegal, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for her dedication. Ms. Inquita Salami brings to the position 30 years of experience in humanitarian affairs and protection, mainly in the field. Uh, for the past three years, she served as the regional, uh, as the director of the Regional Bureau for the East, uh, for the East, East Africa, Horn and Great Lakes regions of Africa in the office of the High Commissioner for Refugees. <clears throat> a quick update from Peru, where the, central, uh, where the Central Emergency Response Fund from the UN has just approved a disbursement of $6.9 million to provide assistance to about 245,000 people impacted by rains and floods in the north of the country. This will enable UN agencies to supply shelter, health services, food security, nutrition, water, sanitation, hygiene, education, and protection to people in need. Um, Quick, a couple of programming notes. Uh, 2023 edition of the online Africa Dialogue series gets underway today, entitled Market and Scale, Unlocking Industrialization Through Intra-African Trade. The dialogue series will focus on the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area that could, ac that could accelerate Africa's development, lift millions out of poverty, and contribute to achieving the promises of the 2030 Agenda and the African Union's own 2063 Agenda. In a pre-recorded video message for the launch, uh, the Deputy Secretary General said that industrialization has become a must for Africa's economic transformation. The Africa Dialogue series will culminate with a high-level policy dialogue on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of May with the participation of the Secretary General. 2 p.m. today, if you are free, uh, the General, in the General Assembly's visitors' lobby, our colleagues from the, UN, from the peacekeeping department are launching a photo exhibit to mark 75 years of UN peacekeeping. The exhibit is part of a year-long global campaign under the theme Peace Begins With Me, which seeks to demonstrate the powerful impact of the UN peacekeeping and its partners and have on the lives of millions of people caught up in the conflict. The exhibit features a collection of pictures of peacekeepers in action from the very first deployment of military observers to the Middle East in 1948 through the 12 missions that are operating today. 
Tomorrow, we will be joined by Guillaume Canella de Souza Godoy, Chief of the Freedom of Expression and Safety of Journalists of UNESCO. He will brief um, on the World Press Freedom Day, which is, what day is World Press Freedom Day? Wednesday. All right, just checking. Okay, Edie, Edie, go ahead. Okay, well, you don't always know when I ask a question. <laughs> go ahead. Um, thank you, Steph. Um, a couple of a, a couple of questions. Um, first, um, Volker Perthes has told the AP that uh, both sides in Sudan are willing to send representatives for talks, which hopefully might lead to a breakthrough. Do you have any more details about where and when this might happen? No details to share with you uh, at this point. We very much hope uh, that the two generals will find a way forward to stop the fighting uh, immediately uh, for the sake of the Sudanese people and to halt the deteriorating humanitarian situation, which is quickly unraveling. And could you give us any more details on Martin Griffith's plans? Um, Martin is in Nairobi. Uh, I expect some onward to travel soon. Uh, a number of logistical issues need to be worked out, but as soon as we have something to confirm, we will share with you. You can come back to me later. I look forward to it. Be tool. Uh, thank you, Steph. Last Friday, uh, you shared a statement with us on the phone conversation between the Secretary General and the Turkish President. It was pretty short, but it talked about the grain deal. Uh, can you give us more details, and did DSG uh, have any assurances from Turkey that the deal uh, might be renewed? Uh, which will no, inspire uh, on I think the, the, the discussion, the, sorry, the discussions uh, are clearly ongoing at different uh, levels. I think we've been clear in, I wish to see this, uh, the, the, the Black Sea Initiative continue uh, to see, uh, we, we are committed and determined to continuing our work on the implementation of the Memorandum of Understanding on the export of uh, the facilitation of trade of Russian food and fertilizer. Uh, what, is, uh, what is clear um, is that Turkey plays a, a critical and pivotal role uh, in this process going forward and in the implementation of what we already have. Yes, Michelle. Has the SJ had a response from President Putin to his letter? I have nothing to share with you on that point. Uh, sure, are you just holding the mic for No, Michelle? I'm not. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so we, we are seeing that Martin Griffiths will head to Sudan. I know you, you won't confirm it from there now. But if he were to go to Sudan, who would he meet with in Sudan? If Martin, Martin's uh, remit is on ensuring the proper coordination of, of humanitarian aid, on ensuring that we see a scaling up of humanitarian aid that, that arise. Um, and he will do whatever he can uh, to do that. But I, I don't want to, the situation is rather volatile. I don't want to predict what will, uh, what will happen. Uh, Deji. Uh, on the Doha meeting, we know that the Taliban is not invited to the meeting, and the Taliban told um, reporters that any meeting about Afghanistan without the participation of Afghan government is ineffective and counterproductive. Given this uh, fact, how, how, how can you ensure that the outcome of this meeting could make a difference on the, situ in the, on the situation in Afghanistan? You know, God knows we're not in the business of ensuring anything. Uh, we're in the business of, of being determined and of continuing to work uh, in trying to coordinate uh, the, the actions of the international uh, community for singularity of purpose uh, for the sake of the people of Afghanistan, notably uh, for women and girls in Afghanistan. The Secretary General will provide uh, an update uh, tomorrow uh, on on what happened during these discussions. So, so uh, well, I'll come back to you. So what, what would be the expectation for Secretary I, General on this meeting then? What, what we want to see, I mean, and frankly, it's what we want to see in many of the hotspots that we deal with, is unity in the international community. Different countries have different roles to play 
And this is true for Afghanistan, is it true for Sudan and, and, and every other crisis that, that we see? Different countries have different, um, uh, different, um, uh, have different roles to play, uh, have different levers of influence, um, but we all want everyone to be working in the same, um, in the same direction. Nabil and then Abdelhamid, and then Pam. Sorry, do you expect that, that the SG will uh, have a, any phone call or uh, talks with uh, Sudanese parties while he's in I, I mean, he will, uh, you know, Secretary General has been on the phone on, on Sudan. He's spoken to both generals at different times. He will do whatever needs to be done whenever it needs to be done. I mean, he's, trust me, his phone is glued to his hand and his ear. Um, and whenever he needs to make a call, whenever it's useful for him to make a call, he will do so. And in Nairobi, do you, do you expect him to hold meetings on Sudan, on the situation in Sudan? Well, I have no doubt that the situation in Sudan will come up in the discussions with President Ruto. You know, President Ruto, part of the Intergovernmental Authority on, on Development, is part of the, the, the troika of leaders with the President of Djibouti, with the President of South Sudan, who are trying to go uh, to, um, uh, to Sudan. Uh, President Ruto, I think, has, uh, has a critical role to play, and so I have no doubt it will come up in those discussions. Um, Abdel Hamid. Uh, thank you, Stefan. I have a couple of questions, too. On Sudan, um, Mr. Berth sounded a little bit more optimistic about sending representatives of both parties mm -hmm. to Saudi Arabia. What is different in this initiative? The sixth truce, which has been declared, is not being respected. So do you see that it is some hope in this Well, I mean, you know, there, we are not giving up hope. Right, just because you know a number of ceasefires have been agreed to but not fully respected doesn't mean that we're not uh, we're not fully uh, working with all in different formats with all the other parties to try to to get to a point where the fighting actually uh, actually stops and we will keep trying whatever in whichever way we can in however way we can. Uh, both leaders are listed on those men wanted for the ICC based on resolution 1591, 1593, 1596 in 2015-2016. So they are war criminals according to the UN, but how can the UN um, navigate through this? Well, let me just say, I, you know, I'm not going to comment on, on, on ICC issues, but as we've said in the past, we will talk with whomever we need to speak with in order to try to bring peace. Uh, One question yes. on Palestine. Mm -hmm. Do you mind? Thank Have you. I ever minded? On Friday, <laughs> no. On Friday, uh, a child of 15 year old, Mustafa Amr Misbah, was shot and killed in the village of Takua next to Bethlehem. This morning, another child, 17 year old, Jibreen al Lada was killed in refugee camp of Aqba Jabbar next to Jericho. Do you have any comment on this? Are you aware of this? This, this is yet another example of the, the unbearable cycle of violence uh, that we're seeing. Uh, and this is something that I think Mr. Uh, Venislan uh, briefed on and, and, and stated the opinion of the UN very clearly when he was here last week. Uh, Pam, then Toshi. Uh, thanks, Steph. On um, just a clarification on the press conference of the Secretary General tomorrow, that will be from Doha. Yes, ma'am, in Doha. Is it should be live. We should. We're, could we're, it be? Bef I mean, will it be before the meetings or after? It'll be after the meetings. Okay, so a wrap of yes, ma'am. And on that front, even though you've made it clear and that the Credentials Committee decides recognition. Thank you. <laughs> there is a lot of, um, uh, there are Afghan women all over the world protesting the possibility of recognition. Um, can you just clarify the UN position on that? Thanks. Recognition is not up for discussion at this meeting. The issue of recognizing who sits behind any, the, the nameplate of any country in this organization is a decision made by member states. In the credentials committee. Of in the credential, I mean, it's it outlined by the charter. It's, uh, yeah. it's 
one of the many things that doesn't involve the Secretary General. Toshi, and then. Thank you. Um, about Sudan, could you explain yeah. why uh, the SG had to appoint a uh, humanitarian resident coordinator now? I'm not sure if it's the uh, right time to bring a new person to the Well, I mean, there, there, was someone, there was someone who had, who was, had whose time had, had come, it was moved on to another post. Uh, she had left. Uh, so we, there was an acting, there's an acting uh, person right now. Um, so we're just going through the process. Uh, I, I don't think, I, I would respectfully disagree with you. I think there's no better time to appoint somebody who is there officially and full time. Thanks. Thank you. Celia? And then, sorry, and, and go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Stefan, Sudan, thousands of people, not only Sudanese national, are still trapped in Sudan. Who could help them? Escape Sudan. Well, it is first of all we we, we thank uh, the bordering countries for the support they've given to people leaving fleeing the violence in Sudan. We encourage all of them uh, to live up to all of their obligations uh, and ensure that civilians who are fleeing violence are accorded their uh, their rights. But who could help? Frankly, it's the two generals who are at war. It's the men who have the fingers on the trigger. Those are the people who can actually do the most by ensuring that the fighting stops, that the looting stops, that humanitarian aid can get through, and that we go back to, on track to a civilian transition. Some of them have no passport, nothing. Uh, it, they cannot it, even leave the country. It is, it is a, a tragedy that we have sadly seen uh, too many times around the world. Dulce. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you about their participants to this Doha mm -hmm. meeting. Is that one special envoy for each country and each organization, or are there, is there an entourage? Uh, I mean, I, I, we invited one person to, to sit uh, behind the, the table. Who, you know, I mean, who Norway or, or Turkmenistan sends, I think those are questions you have to ask them. Uh, but do you know how many women are actually going to be participating in this meeting? I don't know the gender of the, of the envoys. Uh, you'd have to ask the countries who, who, they've, who they've named. I can t uh, tell you that accompanying the Secretary General is, uh, is the, the special uh, representative and head of the UN mission in, uh, in, uh, in Afghanistan, the political mission as well as uh, the head of the, peace, uh, the political affairs department, Rosemary DiCarlo. Uh, Michelle, then Edie. Um, on Afghanistan, the UN uh, was doing this operational review and keeping all staff home until this Friday. Where is that at and uh, when are we well, likely? It's, it, it's at that we're May 1st and I think it's scheduled to end on May 5th. Okay, so no decision made yet on what's going to happen we, with we staff? R we rarely do things before a deadline here. Uh, Edie, and then Evelyn. Um, Steph, do you have any update on reports that uh, the UN has uh, stopped uh, delivering food in Ethiopia's Tigray province because of misappropriation and theft? No, I do not, but let me see if I can get something to you from, from can our you? colleagues. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Evelyn, and then uh, I know the... Um, representative Switzerland is eager to come out here. Evelyn. Um, the, in Sudan, is the so-called Janjaweed general going to stay part of a co coalition? I'm curious why he was well, there in I, the first obviously place. They're, they're just, I mean, I, I guess this, all of this is source of the problem, uh, but it's up to the Sudanese uh, to come up uh, with the right transition. We are not, it, we're not in the business of dictating uh, who sits in government and who doesn't. Okay, uh, thank you all and give us a second and we'll bring out our guests.